I'm Kat Miller. Welcome to our adventure into passionate living. As our celebration of Women's History Month continues, we'll meet some powerful women today who are using their passions to change the world around them. Kelly Sullivan, the granddaughter and grandniece of the five brothers killed while serving together in the Navy during World War II, was at the Buffalo and Erie County Naval Military Park to bring awareness to the efforts being made to save the historical USS The Sullivans. Kelly's heartfelt story of how her family dealt with this tragedy is truly inspiring. Next, Samantha Latcha and I will be sharing some tea and a powerful technique for reducing stress. But first, part two of my conversation with Sheila Brown, who will inspire you with her amazing journey as the first woman of color to own a radio station in upstate New York. Her advice on how to manifest dreams is absolutely inspiring. So stay tuned for this edition of Passionate Living for an exciting adventure that will inspire you to fall more deeply in love with your life. You have such a rich oh life God. and you're yeah. such, oh my yeah. God, your energy. Oh my God, you know, <laughs> I, I tell people, you. I said, um, starting in the industry at 21 and now I stand here as a 56 year old woman and I'm like I'm the youngest in the industry to own a radio station uh, first black woman of color to purchase a station in upstate New York Buffalo and all that and I'm like God this is just you use me to do all that so I always ask him okay what else do I need to do to give back to bring other people up so we do an internship program here to show other people how to get in the industry but they have to be connected with a college you know it has to be there the last year and they get 150 hours and they come in and they do real life interviews so yeah it's been amazing isn't that the dream yeah. though it you know I've always found through the years when you ask people what they're passionate about, they light up right away. Yeah. But when you ask them how they take that passion and use it to give back, mm. it's nothing compared yeah. to the light that comes out then when people are like, well, I do this and I help children and I want to give back. And, yeah. and it's the same with you. Amen. You that, Thank that, you. Yeah. When you talk about yeah. the internship. You know, and then the people. writing academy, how beautiful to have a writing academy. Yeah. So people how to put their stories how out there. How to put their stories, because I believe everyone has a story and a song inside of them, right? And it might not be your life story. Maybe you're a great, great cook. Maybe you need to have a cookbook out. Maybe you um a knitting, you know, maybe you need to show people how to do that. So I think everyone before they leave here should write a book. I really do, you know, because if, if you at the bookstore and you don't see the book that you're looking for, that's the book you should write. Tell me about your book. Yeah, never intended to write it. After I cut the ribbon in 2013, people started calling me from all over the place because they were on social media. And I wasn't even on social media at that time, right? I didn't know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, other people was on, but I was like, I don't have time for that. I can't keep up. Now I love it. But anyway, um, so 2013, cut the ribbon, it was on social media, people started calling me all over the place like, how did you do it? Because I kept it close to my heart that I was gonna buy the radio station. Only my close friends, prayer partners, my husband, stuff like that knew. So I was at prayer one day, and it was January of uh, 2014, and I heard he said, write a book and show them exactly how it happened. So 29 years of preparation, it starts from an entry level salesperson, rise to ownership. And it starts from the first day I pulled up at WUFO, June of 1986, to the day I cut the ribbon. And everything that happened in between, me meet my husband, Marion, because I wasn't married, I wasn't anything at that time. And um, me having my children, me losing my mother, all the stations I worked at, just my whole career is bottled up in there, but God and carves out every section of it. What a beautiful roadmap for mm -hmm. anybody else that wants yeah. to come up. Because it's right there. Absolutely. And has a vision or has a yeah. dream to read that book mm -hmm. and have the inspiration. Yeah. And to know that in their heart, if they hold that vision, there you go. that they can achieve they it. They can achieve it. Yeah, really. Because um, when I give people my book, I'm like, this is my business card. You know, and that's all they need. That's yeah. Beautiful. So yeah, the whole story is in there. So that's how the book came about. So then, after I started writing the book, then people was like, "Oh my God, can you show me how to write a book?" I'm like, "I don't have time for this." So then, SLB Author Academy 
came out. So then once SLB Author Academy, I do classes showing other people how to write a book. So that just, you know, my career has just kind of just happened. Some things I write down and know this is my steps, these are my phases. And then other things in my career, it just kind of happens, you know? So yeah. Yeah, because you're being led. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, everything yeah. you do ends up being basic training for everything yeah. you end up doing. There you go, and that's it. <laughs> I've always said that. Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. You are a powerhouse, a leader, and I'm so grateful to have you with me today on the show. Thank you so You're much. You are the epitome of oh, passionate living. I love it. Oh, I love that. I love that. Welcome to our new segment of Passionate Living Tea Time with Sam and Kat. And Sam, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me, Kat. I'm so excited to be here it's with you today. It's so great to have you here. And Sam and I want to share things that we are excited about, that we think will either help you to calm or center or add more passion and fun to your life. Absolutely. And one of those things we both enjoy is tea. We love tea. So let's get started. Okay. So what tea do we have here today, Kat? We have Tulsi tea. It comes from India and it's holy basil. And I am just infatuated with the rose Tulsi tea. It smells amazing. It's so delicious. I mean, it tastes like you're drinking a rose. <laughs> wow, absolutely. Talk about taking you away. Right? Mm. I have just been obsessed with it. At night I come home and I get that, okay, I need to breathe and relax for a few minutes with a cup of tea before I go on to the evening duties. Right, yeah. after a long day. This would be a perfect to yeah. relax to at home with. Hey, uh, something else I want to share with you about relaxing. It's a technique that I've used before when I have been totally melting down and it works just to calm the system. It's called EMF tapping. And there are these meridian points on your body. And when you activate them with what they call the tapping, and you say at the same time an affirmation, even though my house burnt down, I am calm and relaxed. You know, whatever that is a it stressful is, it's situation. <laughs> Any kind of stressful situation. So, uh, you want to give it a try real quick? Sure. So, if you're, you're if you're feeling stressed out, like for maybe if you're in waiting in line at the grocery store right. and it's a super long line, right? And you don't mind people looking at you funny. Yeah, people might right. think you look funny, but at least you feel better, right? <laughs> right? It's a way to relax yourself. Yeah. Or if there's a situation going on in your life and you feel really, really frustrated. Love it. By Show it. me. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> 15 times a day. So first you start on just the inside of your eyes and it's just a tapping. And it's like, even though I'm very stressed out uh -huh. about whatever the topic is, and then go to the sides over here mm -hmm. in your temples. Okay. I feel balanced and centered and so then above the lip. All these meridian points. And the chin, these meridian points. And I feel whole and complete inside. Yeah. And then you just, you keep repeating that. And some people go to the, after they're done, they go here or they start in the okay. hand. I generally start up here. But you just repeat it over and over again. And it's amazing how within a few minutes, um, you start to feel better. I have been in total meltdowns at times and oh. I've done this tapping. Well, I could see how that could really just kind of take your mind away from the situation mm -hmm. and just bring you at ease by touching those meridian points. I love it, Kat. Thank you so much for sharing oh, this. You're welcome. And thanks for joining me today, Sam. I really appreciate having you here. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> I'm at the Naval Park today in Buffalo, New York, down on the waterfront, and an amazing fundraiser for the Naval Park, the SS Sullivan, and Cami Cooney from The Voice, our amazing voice of Buffalo, is here with me today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to be singing. Yes, I'm going to sing the national anthem in hopes that, you know, it'll promote some, some people to raise money. Paul, can you tell me a little bit about the event? 
This is a party that is hosted by Mr. Douglas Jamal, and it, it is unbelievable that we have this kind of support from the community. It's been overwhelming. Plus, we have a special honored guest here, this lady in green with the red hair. I mean, you can't ask for a, a, a better combination of having a red-headed Irish lass on St. Patty's Day with a last name Sullivan's standing in front of the Sullivan's. Right? Thank you. So beautiful, and you are? I'm Kelly Sullivan, yep, the granddaughter of Al Sullivan, the youngest of the five Sullivan brothers. And Buffalo is like a second home to me. Thank you to everyone in Buffalo for making me feel so welcome on St. Patrick's Day. Thank you yes. so much for being here, Kelly. It's Appreciate an honor it. to be here. And thank you to Douglas Jamal and, and all of his people for making this happen. Uh, this is, it's, it's beautiful. It, he's really started something amazing. And uh, what a wonderful man. I had some time to speak with him today, and I'm just, he, he's, he's inspiring, absolutely inspiring. Great yeah. guy. Yeah, okay. yep, yep. And, and Paul is Doug's partner. Yep. And so, Paul Bill Steve. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we couldn't be more excited. For Kelly and Paul and the work that everybody's done, this came to our attention only, a, only weeks ago. And, and boy, when you look at the history and what this family sacrifice for our country and what they did for all the other families where no two two members of the same family could serve how many other families they protected is something so special that we couldn't wait to jump in and look at this community look at this night what yes, a special special event it is you know, a special yeah. event i teach third grade in waterloo iowa and i was in my classroom getting ready for parent teacher conferences because we're face to face so, so i'm there with my students and i get the call from the naval park that says you're not going to believe what's happening in Buffalo. And then told me about Douglas Jamal, told me about this event and said, do you want to come for St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> Absolutely, I'll be there. Oh, I so, that. I mean, you know, I was doing conferences last I week and now here I am in Buffalo and the people here are amazing and it's so incredible to see the generosity and that, the, you know, th these are people doing good things. So there's a special website, savethesullivans.org and please, if the uh, if your heart reaches out to any one of us, as Doug Jamal has to us, we would appreciate any contribution. So thanks very much. As a community, we're a city of good neighbors. We really all have to pitch in just a little bit. We're not asking anybody for major donations. A little bit of money goes a long way. Throw a little rope to someone that's in the water. Let's make sure that this Naval Museum continues on for generation to generation. And we certainly know the sacrifice that the Sullivan family has made for our country and our freedom. God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet just love you. I met Kelly Sullivan the other night at the event that we just saw and uh, Kelly your heart is just so big and so beautiful and you carry the stories from your family, the extraordinary history forward for other people to understand and to really get the sense how your grandfather and your uncles, how it affected the whole family and the impact that they've had on the world as a result. And I just would love to hear a little bit of the background of your story of the USS Sullivan's and how that came to be. So the boys grew up in Waterloo, Iowa, and they were best friends. And this is your uncles and your grandpa? Yes, my yeah. grandfather. My grandfather was Al Sullivan, the mm -hmm. youngest of the five Sullivan brothers, and then four brothers, so my great uncles. So five boys, so it was George, Frank, his name's Francis, they okay. called him Frank. <laughs> Madison, who they called Matt. Joseph, who they called Joe. And then Albert, who they called Al. And the boys ended up joining the Navy 
after Pearl Harbor was bombed because they had a good friend named Bill Ball. And Bill Ball had served on USS Arizona. And Bill was killed during the you know, invasion Pearl of Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Bill was killed, that was when they decided they wanted to go. And then George, who was kind of the oldest and leader of the right. pack, wrote a letter to the Navy and said, can we please be on the same ship? So the Navy put them on the same ship. Wow. And they were on the USS Juno. They left from New York City. Not long later, they were involved in the Battle of Guadalcanal. And all five boys and their shipmates died from a submarine attack from the yeah. Japanese on the USS Juno. November 13th, 1942. Wow. And that was unparalleled at the time, that all five it really was. as a family yes. would just be annihilated. And you know, I think one of the things that, you know, in the movie they show this, and it's, it's really powerful, but... And the Fighting Sullivans. The, right? the movie The Fighting right. Sullivans, right. Which everybody should watch The Fighting Sullivans. It is the most amazing yeah. movie. It's a, it's a great movie. But the military would typically send a telegram to let you know that your boys are gone. But instead, they sent a Navy official. So they send an officer to the house. For Veterans Day, I show the Fighting Sullivans to my third grade class, because I'm a third grade teacher. Early in the morning, a Navy officer came to the house. She immediately asked the officer, would you like a cup of coffee? And he declines. And when she realizes that he's really there to give her bad news. She says, which one? And he said, all five. Wow. I can't even imagine what she must have gone through in that moment. My great, great grandma, the grandmother of the five Sullivans who lived with the boys because her husband had died in a, yeah. in a, train, in a train accident because he worked for the railroad, she never thought the boys had, had died. She thought, she truly, truly thought they were still alive on an island. Yeah. And she is the one that christened the ship? My grandma did. My great-grandma. Your great-grandma. Great -grandma. Great -grandma. Yeah. The mother of the five Sullivans. Right. But that's a story too right. because they died in November and the boys were really good about writing letters. Mm -hmm. So they, they got letters often, and the letters stopped. And there was a lady from Waterloo, Iowa, that heard from her son, who was in the Navy, that the boys had been killed. And so this is what she wrote. And it says, Waterloo, Iowa, January 1943. So this would be two months after the boys were already killed. Bureau of Naval Personnel, dear sirs, I'm writing in regards to a rumor going around that my five sons were killed in action in November. A mother from here came and told me that she got a letter from her son and he heard that my five sons were killed. It is all over town now and I'm so worried. My five sons joined the Navy together a year ago, January 3rd, 1942. They're on the cruiser USS Juno. The last I heard from them was November 8th. That is, it was dated November 8th, U.S. Navy. Their names are George, Francis, Joseph, Madison, and Albert. If it is so, please let me know the truth. I am to christen the USS Tawasa February 12th at Portland, Oregon. If anything has happened to my five sons, I will still christen the ship as it was their wish that I do so. I hated to bother you. But it has worried me so. I wanted to know if it was true. So please tell me. It was very hard to give five sons all at once to the Navy. But I am proud of my boys that they can serve and help protect their country. George and Francis served four years on USS Hovey. And I had the pleasure to go aboard their ship in 1937. I am so happy the Navy has bestowed the honor on me to christen the USS Tawasa. My husband and daughter are going to Portland, Maine with me. I remain sincerely, Mrs. Alita Sullivan, 98 Adams Street, Waterloo, Iowa. Wow. Oh, that's it's heartbreaking, and it was a time where people were so proper and so polite. And, but she's just so scared about her sons. Yeah. And, yeah. Wow. And instead of christening the USS Tawasa, she, she christened the USS Sullivan's, which is here in Buffalo. Right. 
you know. And the ship was actually supposed to be called the USS Putnam. It was already built right. and, and designated. And President Franklin Delano Roosevelt changed the name of it. Yeah. So he said, we're going to name the ship the Sullivans. And so three months after she wrote that letter, she christened the ship in honor of her boys. Wow. Yeah. That's remarkable. And now the ship, of course, is this historical monument. I know for everybody in western New York, I've heard the story of the Sullivan brothers since I was a little girl. And people all over the world know the story through the fighting Sullivans, through the news, and now the ship has had problems. It's taking in water yeah. and needs a massive amount of repair, which is what the fundraiser was that we met at the other yes. evening. And I got a phone call from Naval Park from 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 the Paul, the CEO of, of the park, and they told me what was happening. And of course, I was extremely concerned, but I knew the ship had had troubles. We've we've had these troubles before; right. they're getting worse. And to hear all the wonderful donations that were coming in, I was just overwhelmed. I, I couldn't believe the you know the whole city of good neighbors is so true here. I think about where that ship could have been because so many other cities could have taken that ship on. You know, because some people say, well, how did the Sullivans end up in Buffalo? I'm like, I don't really know. But I know that right now I am so grateful that that ship is here in Buffalo because I don't know that another community would do as much as the people of Buffalo have. Beautiful. It's so heartwarming to hear the story to hear the history, to hear about your, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, the, you know, like I say, carrying that story forward. And it's, it's, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you for coming to talk to me and telling the story to people. It's important for people to know. Thank you for joining us today on this magical ride into passionate living. Join us each week on Tuesday and Thursday evenings at 8 and Sunday mornings at 11. Plus, you can view segments of our show on YouTube at passionateliving.tv or on our website at passionateliving.com. Our goal in producing the show is to inspire you to live your dreams as your journey will end up affecting the world around you in a powerful way. We hope you'll join us each week as we journey into the realms of passionate living. Until our next adventure, remember to take at least one baby step to bring you a little closer to living your dreams.